You've probably heard Toolpath spoken about in terms of 2D, 3D, full five axis simultaneous. But what do these terms actually mean? In this video, I'll be explaining exactly that as well as how we can program these toolpaths inside of Fusion 360. The most basic of these toolpath types is called 2D, which as the name suggests, involves the tool only ever moving in two dimensions or two of the machine's axes while cutting. Generally, these are the X and Y axes. If we have a look on our machine, we can see one of these 2D toolpaths in action. You can see the tool does come down in the Z axis, but when the actual cutting pass begins, the tool only moves on the flat XY plane. The next step up from here is called a 2.5D toolpath. This is when we take a 2D pass and add multiple depths to it. The reason why it's called 2.5D and not 3D is because the tool is still only ever moving in two axes. We have a 2D pass, the tool steps up or down in Z, and then that same 2D pass is repeated. Again, if we go to our machine, we can see one of these 2.5D toolpaths in action. The next type of toolpath we have is a 3D toolpath. This time we do have all three axes moving to our X, Y and Z axes while cutting the material. This means we can now create more complex geometry, such as curved surfaces. Again, if we go back to our machine, we can see one of these 3D toolpaths being run. Here we can see a ramp toolpath being used to create this fillet. The tool is moving in the X and Y directions while continuously moving down in Z. At this stage, we're already using all three linear axes. So the next step from here is to introduce a rotational axis. Now this is only possible depending on the setup of the machine that you have available. Some machines only have the three linear axes, meaning that anything more than a three axis toolpath is not possible. Some machines have one additional rotational axis, and some machines, like the one I'm using here today, have two additional rotational axes. For more information on all of that, make sure to watch our CNC machine types video. As my machine has two rotational axes, this means that I can go above the three axis toolpath. One option that I have is to use a four axis toolpath, which as you might guess, uses my three linear axes and now introduces one rotational axis. This will give me greater access to areas on the part with my cutting tool, as I can now rotate my part relative to the tool. The next stage from that is to go for a five axis toolpath, which uses my three linear axes and now two rotational axes. This gives me even greater access again, as I can use a combination of the rotational axes to gain access to even more areas. I can also have greater control over the angle at which my tool makes contact with the part, meaning that I can influence the surface finish quality. Going back to our machine, we can see a five axis toolpath in action. One more term that you may have heard is a three plus two toolpath. And you might be wondering why this isn't the same as a five axis toolpath. The main difference comes down to how many axes can move while the part is actually being cut. For a five axis toolpath, all five axes can move as the part is being cut. But for a three plus two toolpath, the rotational axes are only used to reposition the part relative to the tool 
while the tool is away from the material. Once the part has been repositioned, the toolpath itself is effectively run the same as any other 2 or 3D toolpath. Again, if we go back to our machine, we can see an example of a 3 plus 2 toolpath being run. We can see a standard 2D toolpath cutting our part. The tool moves away, the part is repositioned using the rotational axes, and then the tool comes back down onto the part and machines in three axis. The combination of the rotational axes being used for positioning and the toolpath itself make this a three plus two toolpath. Now that we understand the different types of toolpath, let's have a look inside of Fusion 360 to see how we can program them. Inside Fusion 360, the toolpath strategies for milling are split into 2D, 3D and multi-axis. Here we can see a 2D profile path applied and we can see it is only occurring in the X and Y directions. If I edit this, I can add multiple depths to this, now converting it to a 2.5D path. From my 3D strategies list, I have a ramp toolpath, and we can see how this moves the toolpath in X, Y, and Z axes at the same time while running. Then, moving to the multi-axis options, I have a rotary toolpath, which is a four-axis toolpath, as this includes using one rotary axis. I also have a swarf, which is a full five axis simultaneous path. You'll remember that we also discussed three plus two toolpaths, which is when we use rotational axes, but only for positioning. I can turn any of the toolpaths from their two or three axis version into a three plus two path by using what is called tool orientation. In the geometry tab, I simply need to turn this option on set my new axis directions from the CAD, and then everything else about programming the toolpath is exactly the same. That concludes this introduction video to the different types of toolpaths. Thanks for watching.